The Sahara is among the world's harshest and most severe regions. Spanning across 11 million square kilometers, it easily surpasses all other hot deserts as the largest one in the world. In this video, we'll show you how the largest water catching system of its kind is being used to transform desertified land into a farming oasis by irrigating agricultural fields and bringing clean drinking water to hundreds of thousands of people in 16 remote communities. Its landmass is bigger than Australia alone. Topographic variation, from sea level to mountains over 3,000 meters in elevation, gives the region a wide range of climates. On the southwestern border of Morocco, near the Sahara, are the Anti-Atlas Mountains, with an annual rainfall of less than 5.2 inches, or just 10% of the global average. This is one of the driest regions in Morocco, and is prone to severe droughts. Here, 60% of the population doesn't have access to clean drinking water in their homes. Also, farming is quite difficult and risky because of the water scarcity and severe droughts. So while men go to the cities to get jobs, women stay in the villages and walk three miles each day to wells to get clean water. Because groundwater levels have been decreasing constantly, many wells are suddenly running dry. Now, about 40% of the world's population is suffering from water scarcity. Two billion people have no access to clean water, despite the fact that 70% of the Earth is covered in water, the majority of which is locked away in glaciers, and thus inaccessible to humans. However, cutting-edge technology is trying to reverse the effects of water scarcity by supplying the Sahara region of southwest Morocco with clean water. Due to its extreme climate, the southwestern region of Morocco is home to a wide variety of species seen nowhere else on Earth. Because this region is in the Atlantic Ocean's proximity, it means that this area often experiences wind and fog. But because it lies in the Sahara Desert's transition zone, the summers here are blisteringly hot and dry, and rainfall has declined in the region over the past decade. It's a common myth that deserts are completely uninhabitable. But nomadic tribes formerly occupied this area, cultivating and trading across the Western Sahara's enormous landscape. It's hard to believe, but life has persisted and even thrived with these conditions for centuries. Different factors might cause the desert to either grow or shrink. Human intervention in its transitional zones plays a huge role. Because of their holistic land management, nomadic peoples transformed the desert into a fertile oasis. Parts of their nomadic homeland were divided, so agricultural production declined dramatically. What followed was an extended dry period that exacerbated the process of desertification. The indigenous flora and fauna were wiped off due to the presence of soldiers, armed automatic guns, and automobiles. By the 1980s, the nomadic culture had vanished due to forced settlement and industrialization that had occurred throughout the 20th century. Large-scale irrigation projects were planned, but the resulting soil salinization eventually led to desertification. It was Isa Durham, however, who was instrumental in reviving Western Sahara's fertility. Isa Durham, a successful mathematician and businessman, comes from the mountain region of the Anti-Atlas, close to the coastal town of Sidi Ifni, a town which is covered in mist for an average of 130 days each year. Isa Durham was aware that he could make water from fog, despite the country's chronic drought after he learned about fog collection in Chile's Atacama Desert, one of the first places in the world to collect water from nets. There was no doubt in his mind that he could duplicate the scene on Mount but Mesquita. However, it would require and improve technology to resist the 100 km per hour winds that blow in from the Atlantic. With help from the German Wassertiefung Foundation, he developed a new, cutting-edge technology called Aqualanus, which consists of fog nets for collecting water and rubber expanders to stand against winds of up to 120 km per hour. They are equipped with flexible tails that allows the net to move when the wind blows. Additionally, they have a spacer 3D knitted fabric that, in comparison to flat woven mesh materials, has a greater surface area for generating greater water yields. This project has been growing steadily for the past decade. Currently, with 15 Aqualana systems in place, it boasts the largest collector park in the world, with a total mesh area of 1,682 square meters. In addition, 16 communities and one school in the valleys near the Aqualana site now have access to potable water. There will be an increase from 8 liters per day per person to 18 liters of water per person each day for the area of about 
1,600 residents. As a result, the village girls no longer need to spend time away from school going to wells to get fresh water. Another great result of the improved water situation is that people can now grow small amounts of fruit and vegetables, opening up new sources of revenue. There is a possibility that this project may be expanded onto the coast, where there is three times as much fog as compared to Mount Butt Mesquita. So it's an option that's definitely worth exploring for other countries who have similar climates across the world. Hope you like this video. If so, click the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. See you next time.